Kaldor say it's okay. <laughs> Kaldor yells at me for fanboying too much. <laughs> no. I love Wubby, man. I, I wish know. you would look at me this way. I, one day. One day. Wanna, <laughs> once you grow some hair, it flows back like Wubby. Like, here's what here's what you got over Wubby. You got personality. It's, it's a little personality, but you got some personality. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take it. There we go. There's a positive. <laughs> Tracer made out again. Team Liquid not one to face off against that Tracer. When you have two of the deadliest Tracers in the league on the opposing team, not a bad ban. Just a question. What's up? Does your girlfriend listen to these casts? <laughs> no, I don't think she does. <laughs> That's like, that was like, I hope she doesn't. <laughs> if she does, I'm in trouble. She understands. <laughs> she understands. Okay. She's wise. <laughs> well. Blaze picked up by yeah. Team Liquid. You were just talking about the solo lane and how important it is on Dragonshire. Yep. And that's immediately recognized by Liquid. And they're simply saying, um, let's give you the best chances of actually taking that solo lane. And this is the first time that Team Liquid plays Blaze. Yeah. So first time for them. Uh, th again, it's the map where we have the most important solo lane from, I think, all the maps in the map pool. Yeah, I think Tarzan is a good one. But yeah, but I would then. say even here, it's like more important. So yeah. Liquid definitely catering with that with that first pick to the map. Brax is sold out. The map that nobody plays. Yeah, exactly. But that's uh, one that you have a top lane. Okay. It's trying to match you. And it definitely keeps Dignas thinking. Definitely, Dignas runs out the time pool and makes that choice and goes into Uther Genji. So Dragon Blade and Divine Shield on the end. Yeah, Dignitas has had the blaze for all three games they've been in today, so excited to see how that pans out for them. Good chance that we'll get to see that Dahaka from Wubby, which is one of the mainstays. I thought we would get it last map, but it went over to Snitch for Cursed Hollow. Other options too, we can get that Leo coming in. It could also be banned. Liquid has the opportunity to ban it out if they want to. Yeah. So we're waiting for their own pick combo. This is a map where, I mean, I might be wrong, but let me double check. I think they played Chromie a few times here too. Yeah, Chromie yeah. three times played by them. So. I wouldn't be surprised if they go with Narok's Chromie once more. Yep, Dragonshire, Tuma, Spider Queen, uh, usually the two places. Brax is sold out, even though we haven't seen yep. it here in Europe. We're going to see those Chromies picked up. I mean, we have Grey Mains still around. They love to play Muradin as their main tank. And that's actually important here, because oftentimes you can wait with Muradin as a pick uh, until the later stage of the draft. But Dignitas loves to play Muradin as well. But they go for Greymane first, so as we said, Greymane is also a strong pick for them. On this map, Liquid has played Greymane three times, and they won all three games. So this is the one hero that they have on this map, or one of the heroes on this map, where they have currently still at 100% win ratio. Lucio also being picked. And that's actually the first time that they play Lucio. Yeah, on, and they pull him out early, too. They obviously want to make sure that they have quick rotation between the middle and the bottom, and Lucio does aid to that. It's also, you want to have something against the Dragon Blade. So right now, True. Sound Barrier is just too good a counter. Good There's point. a good chance that Dignitas bans it out if you don't pick it now. So I think that makes, it clears up the priority of them. Now you have two options. You have Bunker and you have the Sound Barrier to handle the Dragon Blade coming your way. Bans being thought about for Dignitas. What are they afraid of facing off against? Could it be a main tank they want to keep away from their opponents? Just also a bit of a side note on how a strong Liquid actually is on this map and with Greyman on the map. I just told you he has, they are three and zero on Dragonshire, so against three different teams they won here. And outside of that three zero on Dragonshire, they are four and two on Greyman. Hmm. So outside of Dragonshire, they have actually a really sad track record with Greyman. But here they really play well around him. The control that he gives you on the camps is something that they use very well to get night camps and also to take, of course. Uh, the Siege Giant camps, so there's a lot that really works for their own playstyle. They ban out a Nuburak over the Haka, and here's the Muradin ban, by the way. So Dignitas doesn't even pick Muradin themselves, but they acknowledge how much Liquid plays Muradin on Dragonshire yeah. and how much Sport Billy prefers the hero, so uh, even going to an extent where they ban him out. You mentioned Chromie. Dignitas could run the Chromie itself. Poik yeah. has been good on the Chromie. We've seen him here before on this battleground. They've also been killing on Cassia lately, but I think with having a Genji set up here, you usually want to have a mage that can soften up the opposing team. So Golden and Chromie are kind of where I'm leaning towards here for Dig. Mm -hmm. Dig hasn't played Gul'dan on the map yet. I mean, Tracer has banned out. That was a bit of a go-to for them. Yep. I'm still waiting for the Dihaka pickup for the top lane. I'm currently thinking what else could it be. I mean, Dignitas played Sonya, but Sonya has really fallen off in the last few play days. If anything, I could see Leoric, but I think Dehaka with the global just gives you too much value. There's the Chromie and Dehaka, both of them. 
Chromie to Haka end. So now we get to see what exactly Nurok wants to play here. Yeah, and that's... I mean, we're always talking about the Ming and that they haven't really yeah. seen too much the Ming play yet. But also it's the front line. At this point, what do you use as your main tank? Because from a tank perspective, they've really heavily banked on Muradin on this map. We've seen them with Arthurs, but that was a solo lane that was Eternal coming in for it. Now we have Blaze. So what is Sport really going to play now? Are we going to see ETC again from them? ETC. I can see Johanna take it away from the Chromie composition. Mm -hmm. is, Johanna's actually a really good point because JPL traditionally is all like he has a couple of heroes that he really likes to play and Johanna is one of them. Yeah. Now we said that she wasn't really that dominant in, uh, in Europe and uh, today she got another victory but she was also played by Dignitas and Dignitas has one game with her obviously a win but that could be something where JPL now with the Chromicom says, okay, let's let's take her. Material and Junkrat. Four team Liquid. Now is that a sideline Material? Or is that a sideline Blaze? Either one can be slotted in. Blaze would be the better main tank here. Dignitas, considering what their main tank will be. I would expect Blaze against the Harker. But you are right. Yeah. Could be other way. Same options here for us that we were talking about for Team Liquid. ETC or Johanna? Uh, I don't think they're going. They won't Could they go in? New Brexit band. Uh, for a moment, I was really thinking if they might throw out something like a Stitches here, but I doubt it. So I would uh, actually say could be an ETC. Then again, Dignas isn't really playing a lot of ETC. So far, they haven't played a single time. They actually Ooh. do Stitches. JPL, it's time to hook. That is, I think, the second Stitches game that they are playing. So you have the combo. Yep. You have the hook into a Uther Stun, into a Chromie combo. We've also seen in the past between Wubby and JPL, they'll go into a hook and then have a drag come in afterwards and then pull that target into a fight. Typically, that's a little bit more based on Malfurion. You'll have the Dahaka pull the target into the Malfurion route, but hey, it could work out here too. A lot of CC available for Dingtas. Yeah. The one thing that with outside of Tomb of the Spider Queen where Stitches is sometimes a bit, it, it demands a different playstyle because so far Dignas has been extremely aggressive moving forward mm -hmm. and uh, with Stitches usually sit a little bit more back and wait for that hook to come in. They have still some engage potential but yeah, with the stun on Uther they have to follow up and if they get the yep. Chromium uh, combo in that also hurts. And let's not forget that there's a Lucio on the field. So right now, how do you save the hook target? There's no nothing that cleanses that out. So unless uh, you hook, let's say, Teriel, he drops the Sank or jumps out, every one of these heroes is going to have a rough time unless Blaze is nearby and can drop the bunker. Well, let's go figure out what's going to happen here. As we move into game number four, will Dignitas be able to secure the series with a 3-1, or will Team Liquid continue to surprise and tie up the series? Dragonshire is the map, and we have Team Liquid to the left. Sport Billy on Blaze as the main tank. We have Splendor on Lucio, Hazops on Greyman, Nurog on Junkrat, and Eternal on Tyrael. On the right side in the red, JPL on Stitches, Snitch playing Genji, Puik on Chromie, Zelia on Uther, and Wubby on Dehaka. All right, time to find out if they can get another victory here with Stitches. As we said before, they have played him once so far, and that was a victory. So far, Th Stitches has played, and played three times, once by Fnatic, once by Dignitas, and once by Method. All three games were victories. Genji going to be looking for jumps, looking to force these fights, picking up that Agile Dismount on level 1. Very typical on maps that have solo laners that usually have that 1v1. Speaking of uh, 1v1, Sport Billy is actually uh, 1v5 as he's getting engaged upon here next to Dignitas. The drag comes out, but he'll be able to escape there. Splendor making sure that he can walk away from the fight quickly. Yeah, good dodge for this one. Greymane again for Team Liquid on the map is a 3 and 0, so they won all three games where they played him on the map. And actually, the one time they didn't play Greymane, they lost on Dragonshire. So, Greymane, one of his strengths is, of course, the control that you get over the mercenary camp. So, this is something where Dignitas has also excelled in the past. The series against Trick Esports come to mind, comes to mind, where Dignitas played exceptionally well. 
around the push at the top lane with an early night camp. But the question still remains if Liquid can again use Greymane to just control these camps and then maybe pressure Dick. And they're already trying to do exactly that. So at this point, we're having Sport, Billy, and Splendor with Hazops now moving in, trying to take the Siege Giant camp. And even with a vision play here by Poik, Splendor is just making sure that there's enough space, pushes them back, and so then the Siege Giant camp is taken. Dignitas has not taken theirs yet, so that opens up a possibility of Team Liquid to pressure the bot lane a bit heavier. Yep, they can pressure it, they can move in for a Giant play. Giant play is a little bit risky with Komi floating around, but options are available for Team Liquid. Instead, they're actually setting up a possible gank on the top lane as Snitch is headed up there against Ethernal and harass him slightly. Dignitas. Yep. Well, now just defend their bottom lane. Yeah, Siege Giant still gets something. Splendor is dancing around JPL, making sure that he can't set up a hook from the side. But they still need to be cautious about the control over those two shrines at the top tier. We're still fighting with the Haka. Down here, Nurug is now taking over control as Zelia was starting to move on to the point. But the Siege Giants have been deep pushed. So up to the top, we're still having that battle. And uh, Hazops and Sport Billy are always trying to see if they can maybe move over. But I really like the vision play that we have from Chromie. Just controlling the jungle there and making sure that they know whenever someone is headed top lane to gank the Haka. And they have caught on to the strategy too. Seeing two in the middle, they just start moving in with three on the bottom. Start working on those turrets a little bit, but also control the shrine. And the shrine's being activated. These Ziggs can move in for a dragon at some point, but again, they have to be careful with all five being up for Team Liquid. Ooh, a drag on top of that Greymane, pulling him underneath the towers. We get a little bit of damage there. Yep, Greymane on half HP thanks to that, and Snitch is already on the move to do the same thing to Lucio. <laughs> Started moving in and pressured him low. And Eternal has reclaimed the top, so this is going to be the battle up at the top lane, trying to keep the Shrine control here. And both of them have quite a few tools here, especially with the Haka's wave clear to keep the Shrine Control, so it's Ring Around the Rosie the entire time. Hazuops down here in trouble. Nice move by especially Greymane dodging the hook, but JPL with a very cool one as well, trying to anticipate where exactly Genji would move next. Hazuops reading that and able to dodge, but Genji was very close to taking it down. Yeah, Sport Billy sitting in front too to uh, absorb the shurikens that were coming in just to make sure that Greymane didn't get connected with. Hazuops just barely surviving. Teamwork makes the dream work. As Sport Billy controls the middle lane against two, JPL and Snitch. And the pressure's on Liquid. Both of the Shrines taken, they reclaim the one at the bot lane, but you could definitely see how much of damage Poik can dish out with those combos. And he pressured Splendor, he was able to pressure Nurok before, but now Team Liquid has reclaimed the bottom uh, Shrine, and this is what they're going for. Also, the adjustment again with, uh, especially Junkrat here, gotta trap them all as the level 4 talent, so hitting straight with the quest with a Steel Trap. Yeah, so hitting seven heroes with that will reduce two tra the Steel Trap's cooldown by three seconds and also increase the number of traps by three. You get a Dural Anomaly if you finish that quest, basically, on Junkrat. A uh, bit of a pain to deal with, mm -hmm. so interesting build-up. Allows you a lot of control. Yeah, it allows you control over the Shrines. Ah, Eternal! Uh-oh, oh, that he might be able to get out since the Tongue just missed. Oh! oh. Perfect play by JPL. Of course, seeing the Eldruins coming out, it was the most likely move for Tyrael, and he hits the hook in perfect time. But we still have a potential kill against Zelia, but the time trap is stopping Lucio. Nurok wants the kill, but instead it's Blaze who falls. Double kill for Dignitas, taking Blaze and Tyrael down. Can I fanboy over Zelia now? <laughs> you can fanboy over like whoever you want. Dodging grenades flying at him. A couple did connect, but he gets the heal at the last second to bait the idea of him actually falling into a death. And then, with him having a sliver of HP, he still turns around, drops in an auto attack, and drops in a stun to secure the kill and walks away as cool guys don't look at explosions. Zillia's a beast. Kid's good. Kid's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. JPL. Could be another hook here. Nurok already anticipating that a hook could be coming his. This is, by the way, one of the things about a Stitches player. You don't have to throw the hook out on cooldown. Just what? you having it is absolutely dangerous to an opponent. You can see how Liquid, when they know the, the hook is ready and it's not on cooldown, how they're always trying to make these dodge moves. There's always so much pressure on it. It's pretty similar to when we talk about the ETC not using stage dive in every fight. I mean, I guess. Uh, it mosh pit. Mosh pit. <laughs> Well, nine and a quarter to nine and three quarters. Dignitas about to hit that level 10. Wubby on the middle lane, thinking about moving in for that shrine, but Team Liquid has three people here to deny him access towards that dragon. And he'll just go ahead and head back to the top once again. Grey main, 
thinking about moving in, but he has to be careful because Stitches is going to drop down the future Bile and chase down for Billy. Yeah, Genji wants it. Snitch moves in, but Blaze wants more for now at least. Making sure that Dragonite isn't captured, but still, they get it. Genji goes in again after the oil spill is over, takes the DK. Small window where they have 10, and they set up everything perfectly. They already controlled both of the shrines, so they just simply had to set up in mid lane. JPL dropping the Putrid Ball, zoning them out, and then Genji jumps over and takes it. So middle lane takes some pressure. Here comes the dragon, waltzing its way down the bottom lane. Uther holding the bush to make sure no one's rotating towards his team to go for the massive flank. It was a nice move and a nice thought here by Junkrat, but unfortunately for them at that point it was already a bit too late. Now we're having the plague. <laughs> it didn't really do anything, but it looked pretty cool. It looks pretty I, cool. I have, to be honest with you, I've never seen anybody hook in Riptide. <laughs> you must have not played Overwatch. The main game, man. Diva bombs, Riptire's coming at you. That's a main thing. I had flashbacks there for a little bit. I, I haven't seen it hooked before. <laughs> just never happened. So I don't know why, but for some reason it was really funny to me. Sacrificing himself. It's from that scene uh, in Iron Giant. You stay, I go. Yeah. Oh, hang on. JPL's low. Taking a bite. Divine Shield comes out. Future Bile coming in. Sportfield is looking for the fight, but here comes Wobby digging on in. Going to look for a fight. Another hook connects, and luckily the bunker will come out. Keep Sport Billy alive. Sport Billy hit the bunker so fast, it actually looked as if Stitches hooked the bunker instead of Blaze. So that was a really nice setup here. The drag, unfortunately, for what would be missed here. So that could have been a kill for them. But we had some really nice plays there regardless. So first of all, the hook, of course, against Blaze, putting him into a lot of trouble. But even before that, uh, that was really aggressive what we just saw. And also, we talked a bit about Steel Trap on uh, level 4, the Gutter Trap Mall. He completed the quest by now, Norok that is, on Junkrat, but now we also have Big Ass. So going for the extra radius and the damage, really trying to be a nuisance when it comes to control. And you can, of course, set that up wherever, around shrines, around mercenary camps. That's definitely one of the tools that Junkrat can now use to maybe also get more displacement in. But... Digna still has that pretty significant lead and experience here by an entire level. And that matters, of course, even more so because they have already hit their level 13. So Dig still, thanks to the two kills and the Dragonite, quite in the lead. Best part about this build, too, is that it makes it very hard for Dehaka to come in on the bush flanks. Yeah. If you ducked on those traps, taking you more service area around the bushes as well. So if he comes in, you're able to set up a trap for him and turn around and try and kill him quickly if you have the resources to do so. So fun little maneuver. Ding Toss hitting 13, Team Liquid hanging out right behind, but Shrines are activating once again for our teams. So for now, it's all be about the Zyke Camps. JPL lands another hook on Blaze. Yeah, Sport Billy not really tempted to drop the bunker there. He knew that he could walk away from this one, but it's a bit of free damage that JPL could push onto him. So definitely worth it. The bot lane gets now pushed out, but with a quest completed and the level 7 in, this is actually one of those opportunities where Liquid can maybe play around improved shrine control. And they already get a camp on their own, pushing through the top. Dignitas has done the same move, so they're gonna more or less equalize themselves. Depends a bit on uh, who clears first, but the Haka is the one sitting at the top lane. Nurok, yeah, moves away right Bye. away. Bye! I mean, that was an important one, with JPL already sitting there. Yeah, he was ready to hook. You needed to rush. Nurok pokes here, but the shrine goes over to Ding Toss in the south. What will be doing his best to fight on the top with Tyrion and Greymane floating around and a night camp in the away. He's going to need some help from his teammates. Will they rotate up to help him clear all this out? Sport Actually, he's a bit scary. Yeah, he definitely is. Sport Billy with a grilling kill, by the way, also completed on his four, but still went into the fuel leak on uh, level 13. So it's a lot about the oil spill here. Yes, the gank actually. Stitches is coming in too, but we also have Blaze on the way. So Snitch, even though they were trying to set this gank up, is now on the way back. Zelia still on the mount, so he has an easy time retreating. But JPL, oh, they get the Dragonite. They wow. move in, they get the Dragonite. There's a quick punt that puts Sportpilot into an awkward position. Eternal needs to move out, and he does. The isolation has hit Hazovs on the other hand. He's attempting to move away. Sanctification comes out, and that definitely keeps them alive for now. But another quick punt against Junkrat this time. Blaze moving to the top, but we have still the camp pushing against Dignitas' top forward, and that's where we see Ruby headed with the Haka, as the Dragonite is still doing some damage in the mid lane. Yeah, this is the Dragonite where they should be able to grab a lead and experience if they can get a forward or two. The forward in the middle, already taking the damage, but the bottom one is what's going to be annoying, as Genji's working on pushing that lane in. Same time, Wubby soaking the third lane to the top side, so that 16 should be here right when Dignitas has that dragon expire. 
<laughs> Warp Blade just goes in for another fight. Yeah, Tyrael also just moving back with her Druid's Might right after he got punted by the Dragonite. Helping Hand coming out as JPL makes sure that everybody is safe and sound down here at the bot lane. But of course, Dignitas with another Dragon's Wrath can finally claim the fort in the middle of the map. They have level 16. We have seen only two kills so far. Tig Liquid with zero kills yet. Dignitas with only two, but it's the second Dragonite for them. So the rotations around the objective have allowed them to take that lead. Surprisingly, only two kills. I feel like we've been actually pretty action-packed. A lot of hooks coming in, but that just goes to uh, say how durable a blaze is in terms of not falling victim to his opponents when he gets hooked yeah. in. We have, by the way, not Law and Order taken. In this game now, we're seeing a Holy Ground on 13. So after we've now seen a very heavy focus on Law and Order for the shields, it's a bit of a change here, trying to work around the displacement and maybe trap someone in those small corridors on Dragonshire. A nice push and siege set up by Dignitas down to the bottom here, but Liquid is very close to picking up their, only le own, their, their own push, their own 16 on the top lane. Yeah? I got you. I'm just like, wait. I missed my tra train of thought in the middle of the sentence. I'm just Dude, like, words are hard, man. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm getting old or something. I'm getting senile here. We should cast some gibberish one day. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be sick. <laughs> I thought we were doing that every weekend. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> the self flame yeah. coming in from Kaldor. So 16 versus 17 now. It's still a one and a half level lead for Dignitas. I mean, this is the moment when you really want to make the play. And against Wobi, if they get the kill, that would be great. But Helping Hand does not connect. That Hazops gets getting hooked here. The Divine Shield, on the other hand, comes out. Pudric Bile also used. This might be the chance for Liquid to force a fight here. If they can get a few kills, that would be great. Riptire comes out, gets taken down. Poik even going for the timeout and can immediately cancel it again. But Liquid's problem is still that they don't find kills. And they haven't taken a fort yet either. They are one and a half levels behind roughly, which means that Dignitas is now starting to uh, completely home in on 20. So Liquid has a few more potential fights on level 16, but they have to make some plays now. Yeah, this is a chance here for Team Liquid to make those plays, even on Talenteers. 16 to 17. They have that holy ground that you were mentioning. Can they find someone to section off and pick off quickly with that Rip Tire and Greymane combo? They even faint an aggressive push into the opponent's night camp, but Dig Toss a little bit too quick for them, are able to grab that instead. They'll have that top lane pushing and the bottom lane pushing as Dig has done a two prong attack one with the night camp and one with the giants. Yeah, Tyrael really homing in very, very heavily all in Eldruin's might here with the holy ground, the Horod Rigger forging on 16. But now we have the night camp up to the top. Dignitas pressuring out the mid lane, having the pressure at the bottom of the map. Liquid is the Oh, nice hook here once again. And that is massive damage. Not even a chance to drop the bunker. An immediate kill against it. And not only that, they also just lost the sound barrier as Lucio was attempting to keep Blaze alive long enough to go into a bunker play. But that didn't work out. So now it's another cooldown burn. Four and five on the map. And also another minute until we have Sound Barrier back on. Things are not going well for Liquid. Like, not at all. It's another Dragonite and an easy one at that. Pressure at the top lane, bot lane, a camp taken. This is scary. Two Night Cans on the top, a Dragon pushing in. Yeah, and 20 just one level away. Again, Liquid doesn't have a lot of time. They need to make something happen with Blaze, but they don't have Sound Barrier. Oh, well, Blaze is back. Just now spawning. As you mentioned, a sound barrier for 30 seconds. Greymane's clearing the top lane. Hook comes out, will be on Tyrael. He drops the holy ground right away to survive. Yeah, I'm not sure if they can force a fight here. They have to defend against the Dragon. I don't see a problem with them defending in the Dragonite. I see a problem with level 20 being reached by Team Dignitas shortly after. Because the camp at the top lane is still getting value. And they are now also heavily pressuring the bot lane here. Another quick punt. That shouldn't really be a big problem either. But they are diving behind the Dragonite and see if they can get a kill here. And Hazos has to move past the Dragonite and gets actually chunked down pretty hard. JPL staying alive here. Uther keeping him up. There's still a Divine Shield too. Team Liquid still wanting to fight. You see the propulsion comes out, drops a bunker to stop out in the Chromie combo, but the Chromie combo still connects. Yeah, and the hook does as well. So Sanctification is out, but they're using Dragon all Blade. their cooldowns. And here comes the Dragon Blade. Blaze is dead. And now we're going to see 20 any seconds. Nitch is trying to get Splendor. Doesn't get him, but they drop Tyrael. They are all quite low, Ooh, but the combo hits, awesome. there's still enough kills for now, so yeah, they're trying to save the key, but I just don't see how now that the 20 is in play. There's no minion waves nearby. Finally, they're going to go and keep rotating out this damage. They have to be careful, though, because Nurok will be able to keep poking and keep them soft up. There we go. Finally, the keep will fall. Wubby 
attempting to escape. He will have Zillia to back him up, so he should be just fine. All said and done, two people fall, and a keep. And it's a two-level lead. Storm Talon's taken by Dignitas, a two-level lead. Five kills against zero. Liquid hasn't found a single kill yet in this game. They'll need to find one, or something soon. The problem is that the fights are too awkward for them. They were trying to dive past the Dragonite, and Hazorbs is their main damage dealer when it comes to their direct damage. But the, by the time he was past the Dragonite, he was already on half HP, because Whoopi, who wasn't a Dragonite at the time, just simply homed in on him completely and chunked him down, Breath of Fire coming out. And at that moment, when he was going finally past, Hazorbs was already saying, I have to go back out. And now there's another hook. And that might be it. Maybe trying to force the fight here. Going for will be isolation hits once more on Draymate. And that's exactly the target they need. Blaze is dead again. And this is the end of Lucio. The end of Junkrat. Yes, a counter kill against the Haka, but that's not worth anything if you lose your entire team. Tyrael is about to fall. Might survive, but I don't think it's really going to matter at this point. Snitch is about to have a swift strike. He's chasing here. There it goes. Sank to stay alive underneath the tower. I'll drew one out again. A third all trying to stay alive and juke it a little bit, buying as much time as possible. St <laughs> wow, able to juke, pretty crazy. Team Ding Toss falling out of their sneakers there. Yeah. But the core, that's the main target. Eternal definitely buying a bit of time and the even surviving Pokes attempt to take him down with the Dragon's Eye here, but I don't think that he can save that core. There's absolutely no way. He's all alone, everybody else is dead. And Team Liquid, they took a map of Dignitas. They definitely made Dick bleed, but now we're seeing the red team. Team Dignitas claiming the series with a 3-1 victory over Team Liquid. Dignitas.